Alright, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the all the elect. Teaching his word is asserting in truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Alright. Um, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, put my little two cent in. Uh it's a video uh of Elder Ayatun. You know, he's basically uh doing a response to um the cat Alize Sakari because Sakari went off, you know, saying that Paul basically contradict himself. You know, Paul went against Yahweh Shai. And um, you know, being that we all know of Sakari and his uh you know, he made himself mighty, you know, among the Israelites, you know, calling himself high priest and taking on the debates, supposed to be well scripted, you know, getting rewards from um from heathens, I should say, you know, and, and proud of it. Going off saying that Paul uh teachings was against Yahweh Shai's teaching when that's clearly not having understanding because Yahweh Shai actually taught Paul one on one. You know, when Paul got knocked off the horse, Paul was blinded. Yahweh Shai told him, I can't kick against the pricks. You know, Paul was hindering and killing uh, Israelites, man, who believed in Yahweh Shai. You know, but, Yahweh, uh, but Paul was a sincere man. He just needed the understanding. And Yahweh Shai came to him, which we all know. You know, and we, and you know, tells you, I believe in Galatians, you know, where uh, I could get it. But, but you know, Yahweh Shai taught Paul. And, um, you know, I just want to give my understanding on this, on the situation because it makes perfect sense. You know, Paul mainly dealt with, you know, like Elder Ayatun was just saying in his video that, uh, you know, Paul dealt with a lot of things that, uh, we deal with on a daily basis, and that's beautiful because the Lord covered everything through Paul. This is why Paul he has so much of the writings in the New Testament, you know, because it was a heavy portion on Paul. You know, the Lord used Paul to cover everything, you know. And guess what? You know, everything that Paul was going through with the brothers back then, you know, even the men that were perverting the gospel, you know, he had to reprove certain churches. And things of that manner, like Corinthians, you know, he had to reprove them and correct them, keep brothers intact until the sound faith of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He went through those things because why? We were going to go through those things. All right? You know, nobody could say, but let me say, there's no cloak, man. There's no cloak. If Yahweh Shai would have come and done what he done, okay, you know, there would be an excuse. But guess what? There is no excuse. Because even after Yahweh Shai left, okay, he still, you know, even taught, you know, men of the Lord. And they went out, all right, and um and uh experience what we were going to experience. You know, check out today, man. Today is really it's kind of the same as it was when Paul was on the scene. You know, we're still under the Roman Empire, you know, we're still under these Edomites. You know, they you know, the world today is still worshiping these pagan these pagan um gods, you know, Zeus, you know, now they calling uh, Jesus Christ, you know, those Greek um those, that Greek mythology, that Greek myth gods, you know, uh uh is still today being used, man. So it's not about the same thing. You know, and Paul, you know, he uh you know, he, he laid it down for us to this day. So I just want to play, I'll let Ayatun speak, Elder Ayatun, you know, speak, and I just, uh, you know, pause it and uh, mm -hmm. speak my, my little two cents. All right. And uh, Lord willing, grab some scriptures if I can, Lord willing. We have meat um, left over, not them themselves, but actually, them themselves would have some meat left over. The ones who were actually through the ceremony, they would have, you know, little courtyards in the backyard and all that shit, groves or whatever. And um, they would have these ceremonies. And what would happen is that these people or the priests, right, would have um, meat, leftover meat, because the priests would get um, off meat offerings from the, from the people that 
that were attending these different ceremonies. So what, the, what they would do is they would take these meats that were used in these ceremonies and they would sell them to the dealers at the meat markets because it would be too much for their household or too much that they can handle. So they would sell them on the meat markets. And so um, what a lot of brothers would do is they would go to the meat markets and would, they would buy these meats. And these meats would be meats. Uh, some of the meat was not used in the ceremonies, but a lot of the meat was. And maybe it was cheaper. I, I don't know the situation, but a lot of this meat was meat that was used or offered unto idols. So a lot of these brothers were either buy these meats on a meat market or they would be invited. You know, they may have a friend, just like you got a friend in the world. Just as Elder Ayah done breaking it down, you know, what, what happened in the past, what Paul was on the scene, it's the same thing that's happening today. It's the same thing. These meats are all defiled. We're, we're basically eating GMOs, genetically modified organisms, all right? We're, we're eating fake foods, you know? You can go to Whole Foods and think you're eating healthy. Cool, you know? Eating a better quality of... But it's still, even Whole Foods has GMOs. On a, on another note, you got meats that are, uh, they've been tampered with. You know, you're actually shit. It's, it's sickening, but it's the truth. You know, some of our meats are mixed with human DNA, man. It's crazy. You know? You got Esau, um, you know, putting two animals of different species into uh, one cell, man, you know? And you better believe also, you know, with these elites, that's why, you know, there was a video that they probably done took down, I remember years ago, it was this uh, so-called Jew, all right, Jewish Edomite. He uh, was, I guess he was a, a, you know, insider or an elite, whatever what he was, but he was spilling the beans. And he said, uh, all the kids that get kidnapped and, you know, this human meat, he said, where do you think it goes? He said, you guys eat it every day. He said, he said, he said, you know, when you eat that McDonald's, you know, what are you eating? You know, so he was basically telling, you know, telling on himself, man. You know, when you eat McDonald's and all that other processed food and shit like that, you don't know what you're eating. All right. Another thing, too, is that, you know, the elites, you know, they have a, 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 a priesthood. Which, which prays and put curses upon Israel every day. And you better believe that uh, these foods in which the world is eating has spirits on there, man. You know? Because it's really all unclean. You know? So, you know, so I just wanted to say that. So, so really, are you really eating lawful food and it's not defiled? We're in captivity. Don't the scriptures say the, the Israel... The, uh, 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 Israel shall eat the foul foods amongst the Gentiles. That is prophecy too. That's prophecy. All right, that's prophecy, man. That's why I said everything Paul was going through it is is really for us. It was it was happening then, and it's really for us today because why we will go we we'll, we're, we all were going to fall away and be Gentiles again. Check that out. We're all we're going to fall. Let me say this right. We're all eventually we're gonna fall away and become Gentiles. All, every last one of us, even the Jews that knew they were Jews in the land, right? And throughout their, you know, upbringing, their parents taught them that, you know, that they was a Jew and they carried the laws of the Lord, you know, at that time. They even fell away today and had to come back into this truth or come back into the acknowledge the knowledge, knowledge of that they're Hebrew Israelites. So what? They became Israel. All Israel uh, became Gentiles. All right. So anyway, that would invite you to so-called Thanksgiving dinner or Easter dinner or so-called Christmas dinner. Same thing happened back in Rome. And correction. Let me just edify more. You know, because you have people out there that are run. You know, with stuck with without understanding. You know, they say one thing and they run with it. We all became Gentiles. In our minds, in our in our frame of minds, man. Okay, we was taught to be. We was taught uh, the paganist uh, uh, gods and paganist worship and rituals. Still to this day, that our people still do. But we're Israelites in the spirit and in the flesh. All right, until the Lord, you know, the Lord woke woke us up, woke us back up. 
you know, because it was our minds to go astray. And that's why the scriptures say, seek the Lord 10 times more, you know. High covered everything, man. This is what makes the most high, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the most high, man, makes them perfect. Because now, this is a situation today. What do a brother do? Okay, you know us brothers. You know we got the the low end of the stick. Some brothers don't got bread like that. Hey, some brothers, you know, you know, don't have uh, uh, you know, brothers be they they kind of dissed far out. They might not have a brotherhood, you know, like being in a camp, brothers are camping by themselves, or it's just him and another brother, the case may be. What do a brother do if a brother, you know, is is is, is lacking uh, money to go and purchase, you know, himself some food, and he knows that his family, you know, celebrates Thanksgiving, right, which just passed. And so happened, you know, a brother worked, but he ain't got the bread. He can get a free meal if he go to his pop's house or his grandmother house or his mother house, you know. He He's not going to go because, you know, that meal, that food there is all for the pagan worship, the pagan ritual of uh, Thanksgiving really is a day that, you know, Esau celebrates for the him slaughtering and taking out the, uh, the Gadites. All right. And the Reubenites, which are the, the Native American Indians. You know, it's really a celebration, you know. Did not the Most High create that food? Is it not a uh, uh, power and prayer? You know, and as Elder Ayatun breaking down the balance, as he read in Paul, you know, that, you know, if a brother uh, faith, uh, uh, if his faith is not built up that way because he can't understand, you know, because we always like that. When we first uh, learn this truth, we were we were like over righteous, you know, for the brothers that suit that sincerely, uh, uh, sincerely follows Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. When you first came in, and when it came down to the laws, we were a little over righteous, man, you know, because because you feared, you know, you just wanted to be perfect until you got, you know, a uh, uh, little experience in the truth, you got more understanding, and then you fell back. I remember even dealing with women, man, when I first came in. Me and the brother Shalomar, you know, the way that we was taught, uh, you know, um, what was it? You couldn't, uh, you know, lie to a woman, you know? And you know what that was doing to brothers, man? You know? Because you felt guilty in your conscience that, you know, you you lied to your woman. <laughs> you know? Because you, because really, it's, you know, because the scriptures tell you, don't let your, what, your left hand know what the right hand do. You know? You don't uh, keep the woman uh, from thy bosom. I forgot Salaki, I'm roughly paraphrasing it. But you don't have to tell your woman everything. And that makes things um, uh, run more smoothly. Because not everything a woman can understand. She's not going to get it like a brother could get it. You know? That was fucking brothers up, man. Until, you know, I, I believe it was Elder Apostle Rakha. You know, it was a video that I saw. And I shared it with the brother. And then we got better understanding. We was like, oh, shit. You know, that's why I say, you know, hey, man, just stick with Great Millstone. Stick with Great Millstone, man. Watch Great Millstone videos and learn, man. Research, do your own research and things like that. But, but stick with Great Millstone, man, because the teachings are 100%. The experience is 100%, okay? When I saw that video with an elder possible car on the street teaching about this situation dealing with the woman, what happened was I said, yo, you know, I shared it with the brother, show, showed him the video. And he even was like, yo, all this long time, been going through hell with, with a woman, you know, they ain't have to do all that because why we were young in the spirit, man. You know, we were young in the spirit and that experience, it gave us a, 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 a fresher, a, a, <laughs> it gave us, um, 
uh, fresh, fresh air, you know, whatever I say that shit. But anyway, you know, it was, it was music to the ears, man. Good music, man. All right. So back to the, uh, let me play the video. Lamb, chicken, whatever the hell the meat was, as long as it wasn't a bottle, pork, you know, shellfish, all that crap. We know that anything else put on that table came from Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. For soon as Zechariah 14 and, and 9, he's the only power. All right? So all that meat, meat came from him. So when you sit down at a table and you eat the meat, you give all praises to Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. Okay? So let's, let's read this. 1 Corinthians 8 and 1, and I'm going to read it quickly. Now it's touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puff it up, but surety edifies. So Paul was church was talking to the church of Corinth. Okay. So these are brothers that we're in and know whose faith was built pretty strong. Okay. That's why I said we know that we all have knowledge. All right. So it says, if any man think that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. Okay. But if any man love the most high, the same is known of him. Verse four, as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice at the idols. We know that an idol is nothing in the world, right? An idol has no no breath. An idol has no power. And that there is none other but the other power but one, Yahweh. All right? Why Yahweh shy? Verse 5, for, for though there, there be that are called gods, Zeus, you know, all them different gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us, the Israelites, there is but one power, the Father, of whom are all things, and in, and we in him, and one Lord, Yahweh Shai, by whom are all things, and by and we by him. Verse 7, Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge, right? Like a brother that just came in the truth, his faith is weak, right? <laughs> or it may even be an outsider, that's outside of, of Israel. And here you are, you're talking about, you know, uh, pagan holidays and this and that, and they may see you go uh, go eat uh, so-called Thanksgiving dinner. So that's somebody without the knowledge. So it says, how be it there, there is not in every man that knowledge. And, and that's why the Lord put wisdom in everything, man. Because, um, like, back to the example, say a brother is, um, you know, he don't have no, no money, you know, he barely could get some bite to eat, you know, this is Thanksgiving time. He know that he can get a free meal. He can get even more than a meal, you know, because you know how your parents are, you know. And then, too, if you've been refraining yourself from being, you know, as you're supposed to not participating in those pagan rituals, when you do come, you know, on a day like that, you know, most of the part, your family be like, oh, you know, happy to see you and shit, you know. And it's the thing about using wisdom. You don't got to go and get the food when everybody's there. Because you know how Jake do, they make big platters and all that and take out uh, leftovers, you know, they keep it for leftovers for the next day. Because you know they don't want to cook the next day after they made all that food. So they be eating that food for a good two days, man, you know, which really ain't supposed to be eating leftover foods. But anyway, you know, you might not even go over there um, uh, uh, at the time with all of them there, you know, because you got to be, you know, you got to use wisdom because when you get there, Depending on how your family is, you know, grandma, you know, everybody got to respect grandma. And she say, you know, everybody at the table, we want to pray. Then they holding hands around the table. Hey, you're not supposed to be praying with them, family or not. You know, ain't no holding hands, praying, you know, and praying and letting them lead the prayer, you know, unto, uh, unto Jesus Christ, you know, which is a false God, you know. And if you, because, hey, I know a brother right now. I'm not going to mention his name, but this is a very young brother. He's very young. You know, his mom's is a demon. She don't want him to be in his truth. The brother got uh, a great zeal in his truth. You know, I use him as an example, his situation. He's what? He's in high school still. He hasn't graduated yet. And, um, you know, he asked me these questions. It's like, okay, then what do I tell him? I had to uh, go in, uh, into the scriptures and, and, and read Paul's letters, man. Like, this, was, this is edifying. This is understanding. All right? You know, because in these situations, what do you tell a brother? You know? And he's forced. This is the thing. This brother don't have no power to say no. He's forced to go to these places. You know? His mom's is forcing him to worship because she don't want him to worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? In a nutshell, she's that evil, man. She's that uh, possessive, man. And, um, you know, basically... Uh, 
you know, you forced to go and it's okay, Salakia. Now you there and 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 you know, he asked me also too, you know, uh what if he's being forced to pray? Well, my advice to him was lead the prayer. All right? What you do is lead the prayer. These are just small situations. Did not Paul say, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do ye not know that we shall judge angels? Because these are small matters, you know, but, you know, it, 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 it matters, okay? That's the point, it matters. And I told him to lead the prayer. Hey, in front of all of them, hey, all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh, whether they look as strange as you, talk about whatever you saying or not, you know, because what Jake gonna do is Jake really gonna say, oh, I mean, evil as Jake is, they probably would. But family, if it's prayer and that and then that spirit of prayer, you know, they'll be like, okay, okay now. All right, well. And then somebody else will try to pray and over overlap your prayer with Jesus Christ. You know? But I say just lead the prayer. If you in that situation, there's some young men out there that believe that watch us and they get caught up in these situations and they don't even have the power to say no, they're forced. What about those men? This is why Paul, Paul, uh, the understanding Paul had and he was given to us is very needed, very needed for today and how we live. Cause it's the same as it just was when Paul was walking the earth. It is the same, okay? It is the same, the same pagan gods, the same uh, ru uh, evil rulership, man, over us. All right, I just wanted to put that in there. I ain't gonna play the whole video. I'm kind of at my destination, so I let it play a little more, and you know, just continue to uh, add my little two cent, which I hope that is edifying. All right, Elder I is done is reading the scripture, and um, so scriptures are being uh, put, uh, brought, brought out. For some with conscience of the idol unto, the, unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience weak is defiled so yeah you got some brothers and maybe some new brothers that they're not disposed to go eat so-called things given dinner like probably all of us when we first came into truth when our faith you know we're, when our faith was still being built up um to us that was highly uh that was a uh, uh thing that was high that would highly offend the most high so we didn't go because why we didn't want our conscience to be defiled all right, verse 8. But me commend us, us not to the Most High. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. Right. So you sitting down to eat a piece of lamb is not, uh, you know, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like you're worship. That's not synonymous to worship in the Most High. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't add anything, you know, to your, to your, um, to your resume or the Most High, you know, like the Most High, oh, yeah. He had a nice lamb dinner on uh, December, you know, 5th, uh, 2019. So, you know what? Let's make him part of the elect. No, it doesn't work that way. It says, but me commendeth us not to the most high. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So, her brother is like, you know what, man? I don't feel comfortable. I don't think the most high is with that. Me going to eat uh, so-called Thanksgiving dinner. Then he's not any better than a brother that say, you know what? I know that meat, that turkey came from the most high, okay? I could have went and bought this shit myself and ate at home. It's the same thing as me going to my neighbor's house and eating the meat. Because I'm going to praise you. I will buy shit outside the same way I do at home, right? So not one is better than the other. They're both going according to where, where their faith is at. Verse 9 says, But take heed, least by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Verse 10, For any man that seeth... And for if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at me in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? Right. So let me read verse 11. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish from whom Yahushua died? Right, exactly. So basically what that's saying is, look, if it's going to offend your brother to go eat a Thanksgiving dinner, then don't do it, okay? For his sake. Okay, and through thy knowledge till the week. Right. You know, because if you know a young brother in the faith and he don't under have that understanding, you know, to to uh you know to not let that brother's faith be tainted and he's very young, don't go. Just suffer it. 
you know, you know, because in all reality, you know, today, you know, you know, it depends on your situation. You know, you might got some money. You don't need to go. You know, you can just go and buy Salakia. Yeah, this is my um shit doing that tapping shit. This that uh this is Satan man. You let it finish. Gotta get the shit fixed. Alright. Anyway, you know, you don't go because you don't want that brother's faith to be tainted, man. You know, like I said before, you know, in the very beginning we first came in, you know. I remember uh, on on uh, days like this, you know, uh, man, we used to uh, used to fast, man. <laughs> you know, just put it out there, shit. You know, when you're young, cause you know you feel like, you know, if you participate or even eat of the food which is uh, given on this day, you know, you felt you felt as though you know it's defiling. You know, the Most High would you know, destroy you because you participate. And that's not so. It accord, it goes according to your faith, man. You got to have understanding. So in a nutshell, you know, Paul uh, 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 did not uh, come against Yahweh Shai or wasn't on board as uh, Mr. Mr. Mighty Warrior Gorilla Hebrew said, you know, wasn't on board with Yahweh Shai. You know, that, that didn't even make sense. You're trying to say Paul was wicked. You know, it's a lot, you know, I ain't gonna go that far. I ain't gonna go that route, but you know, shit just crazy. You know, to say that Paul was going against Yahweh Shai, it's because you don't have understanding. You know, everything that Paul went through is is an example for us today. You know, these little daily situations, you know, these little small situations, which really they're huge situations. Because it's it's about your faith. It's not our warfare, uh, spiritual. Because right now our, our warfare is not carnal. All right, it is spiritual, man. We're literally fighting, um, this this war right now within the spirit. You're fighting against your own self in the flesh. All right, your spirit versus your flesh. You know you gotta have um, you want well you want to have strong faith in this truth. How do you obtain strong faith? First off, that takes prayer, and there's power in prayer. All right. Then, you know, you want to make sure you're walking, uh, uh, walking uprightly, walking, walking honestly, man. You know, and you want your conscience to be, be to be aware of that. So it gives you a form of um, uh, righteous confidence, man, not pride, because there's a difference between pride and confidence. <clears throat> and you feel good about yourself. Did not David say created me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me? You know, you know, you're happy. With yourself because you know you're doing the worst of the Lord, you know, and you're walking rightly, man. You know, so it's all about faith, man. It's all about faith. And Paul was just there to give understanding because he dealt with a whole lot of different situations. Paul got around, you know, that's why the New Testament consists of a lot of Paul writings, man. Paul had a great, a heavy, great uh, portion from the Lord, you know, and it was beautiful because it was all done you know, to give us all understanding, those that are sincere and following Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So I know this lesson probably over 30 minutes long, or maybe just touching. Uh, I hope it was edifying. You know, I just wanted to put my little two cent in uh, after watching Elder Ayatun's video and his response to um, Gorilla Hebrew. And um, like I said, man, watch, yo, stick with Great Millstone. If you sincere, and by following Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, I say it again. Stick with great millstone videos, man. Because that's where you're gonna get this true understanding at. You're not gonna be confused if you sincerely uh in this truth, you sincerely uh believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and looking to learn. You know? You know, other than that, that's maybe the Lord just blocking you, you know? You know, because the Lord has to open your mind up first and foremost anyway. But stick with Great Millstone videos because you will get the understanding, man. You will get the 100% understanding of the Bible, man. You know? So with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.